What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Civilization 5 random game. What is it? I, I don't even have a name for it, but it, it's random. <laughs> random map. 20 random civs, although we're down a few now. And we'll keep going, but we did have a little bit of a, not competition, uh, but, but an, a continent name suggestion. We had, we have, there was three names, but one was just to call one of them Mordor from Lord of the Rings. So we'll, we'll, um, we'll go with the other two. Um, there was a bit of a contest, so we had... Let me just try and find it, sorry. <laughs> There's two names. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we've got the first suggestion was based on the continent's shapes. Pretty pretty simple, simple way of doing it, very creative. As you can see, this continent is shaped sort of, sort of, like it's got a long bit, comes up to the top, and then another long bit with a lake in the middle, kind of like trousers or in America it would be pants, so the suggestion was pan Pantis Land, creative. And then this one was, what was this one described as? A poorly, poorly rendered turtle, so it was called Puturtle, I think. I actually don't have it up, so I might be in that wrong, but um, I feel like I haven't looked at enough turtles. And the other suggestion, which was far more random, was to call this one Canor, yep, C-A-N-N-O-R, and then this one, Elentir, which is a very mystical sounding name, isn't it? A-E-L-E-N-T-I-R. So I'll let you guys choose. I'm probably just going <laughs> to... <they're still laughs> they could work, but it could be also... I'll probably forget them. We'll have to, like, really bed them in. <laughs> but apart from that, we'll continue. Keep hitting next turn. Do a bit of a review as well. It's been a few days for me since I did episode two. Byzantium's still around for now. The Inca failed surprisingly against Korea but they were a very popular pick I've noted so um we'll see obviously some people with a lot of faith in the Incans we of course saw the fall of Ethiopia last time with Korea grabbing the capital and Poland now oh okay Poland v Korea straight away that's that's exciting the Huns are looking quite big we'll see what they get up to next and that's that's that continent Kanor or Turtle, whichever one you prefer, let me know. And over here in Pantis land or Alentir, whichever one again we go for, Babylon's doing okay. Egypt with a few cities, Aztecs. Don't know what they're doing. I thought they were going to invade, they've not. Mongolia with three cities, Indonesia throwing it all away. <laughs> Rome's got another settler, and are they in a war here? They might be. The Ottomans taking control of this city. Japan, piecing out with Mongolia there. India is sort of happy with what they've got. And of course we have Germany still expanding as well, so we'll keep an eye on them as we go on. I'm just going to open the, the other window. I've got the still got the comments up, but then I won't know how long we've been going for. Okay, we're back. <laughs> I can see again. And don't forget the Celts. Sorry, Celts. You're, you're appreciated. I wonder who... is anyone in the deep water yet? No, not quite. Doesn't look like it. Looked like Mongolia could have been there, but no, I don't think so. No one's out here. There's a lot of exploring to be done. But of course, someone may end up on this continent, which also will need a name at some point, thinking about it. And this little island too. A smaller one here. The Inca with another wonder. They get the Barubadur wonder. I'm thinking should we do Info Addicts at 150 because it's a random map, we don't really know what's going on and we're on epic speed or whatever speed, is it epic? Or just long? Epic? Yep, it is epic. I don't know. Maybe we should. Um, this came up two turns early. I think we will just because it's, it's a random map, it's hard to know what's going on. Although I know we only did it last turn so it's a bit weird but it will obviously slow down after this. <laughs> Right, how is Poland getting on against Korea? Not really, nothing. There's not not really any fighting at all. Looks like Korea's ahead on technology. Which said, oh, there we go. Well, the Poland's dead. <laughs> the Huns joining in. Yeah, Poland has some random units all over the place. Those will probably die. That's not good for Poland. And the Aztecs versus the, no piecing out with the Ottomans. Oh, ooh, they were probably going to get this if they'd have stuck at it. The Aztecs. Never mind. They leave new city for Mongolia, and it looks like they may have just beaten Rome to the same spot. Although I would not have recommended Rome to settle there, but if they wanted to, that's where they would have gone. 
do, 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 do. We have good set. Oh, there's some units. Oh, there's some units here. Look, we'll see what Rome, Rome does with them. Even Japan <laughs> seems to be pondering some sort of attack on somebody. Yeah, I can't see this going well for Poland now. Although this city is gonna be very difficult to get at between the mountains, but it does have low defense, so it sort of goes both ways. The Huns though will add some more cities along the coast. Zulu should be getting Constantinople this turn, or next turn. <laughs> there you go, next turn. Very close, and that'll be a big, big win for them. As Germany attacks the Ottomans, or the Ottomans, uh, they seem to constantly be fighting everyone and just surviving, doing fine. But we'll see, this could be a new challenge. They don't have too many units in the south here. And there we go, Constantinople falling to the Zulu. Oh, we're past turn 150. Okay, we'll have a little peek. Maybe we won't do as in-depth as at 100, but there you go. Who is this? That must be the Inca. It is the Inca leading the way on score. Then Poland. Then the Ottomans? Nope. A white line who's doing good. That might be the Zulu, actually. The Zulu? Nope. Oh, that must be Attila, then. Yeah, it's just hard to differentiate with these colours. Here's the Huns. And then there's a bluish line. Which might be Babylon. Um, yep, it is. Okay. This is too hard. When there's like when we're down to ten sieves, maybe I can use this, but not now. Okay, here we go. The population. The Inca lead the way ahead of the Zulu, Huns, Ottomans, Rome, Babylon, India. These are all very close, to be fair. It's not <laughs> that's four hundred, five hundred K between those ones. Germany, Korea, and Egypt. Crop yield, the Huns lead the Zulu, the Ottomans. That is a very different list to the population list, which is very interesting because they're they're linked, aren't they? Food and population. Zulu, Ottomans, Germany tied there. Then Rome, Poland, Korea, India, the Inca, and the Aztecs. Production, the Huns lead again by yeah, nearly double what Rome has. Then the Zulu, Ottomans, Germany, Poland, Inca, India, Korea, Egypt. Biggest economies led again by the Huns. Not such a big lead this time. Then Germany, Poland, Babylon, Ottomans, India, Zulu, Inca, Korea, and Rome. Biggest armies. Again, the Huns just ahead of Germany. Then it's the Zulu, Rome, Babylon, Aztecs, Celts, India, Korea, and Egypt. It's a lot closer than usual games. I don't know if that's to do with the speed, maybe. Potentially. Less snowballing. I don't know. Being sort of trapped in the era for longer. Not letting them get away as far ahead. I don't know. Social policies, the Huns, Poland and the Celts lead the way with 10. 9 then for Babylon, Egypt, the Inca and Rome. Tex, who's got the most? Korea has 27. That's actually quite a big lead over most civs. There's 26 then for Rome and the Huns. 25 Byzantium and Egypt. 24 for Germany, Indonesia, the Zulu, Babylon, India and the Inca. Cities, who's got the most? The Huns have 14. So yeah, someone needs to catch them up. But Rome... The Ottomans and Poland all with eight. The Zulu and Germany have seven. And if the Germans start beating the Ottomans quite well, obviously they'll start to get quite close to 14. The Aztecs with six. Five for Korea and then a few civs there with four. Okay, we'll, we'll look for all of these just to get an eye. India, Babylon, Celts, Mongolia with four. Three for Indonesia, Egypt and the Inca. And one left for Japan and Byzantium. I'm not sure if the Ottomans are close, close to the other city just yet to taking out Byzantium. Science output, a big one again, led by the Huns early on. Then it's the Ottomans, Rome, Poland, Korea, Aztecs, Inca, Zulu, Germany, and India. Culture, again the Huns lead the Celts, then Rome, the Zulu, Poland, Inca, Germany, Aztecs, Ottomans, and Babylon. Wonders, that's pretty one-sided. The Inca with seven, two for Egypt and Indonesia, and then one for the Zulu, Japan, Rome, Huns, Korea, Poland, and Babylon. Uh, great works, the Zulu with three, two for Egypt, one for Babylon, Rome, Germany, the Inca and the Huns. Trade routes, a couple with three, mostly twos. And then tourism, the Zulu and Egypt lead the way with six, and then it's two for Babylon, Rome, Germany, the Inca and the Huns. So there we go, and how are the religions getting on? Here we go. Is it going to work? Nope, it doesn't want to sort properly again. Never mind, but uh, Catholicism leading the way from the Celts in 16 cities already. 14 then for... Buddhism from Poland, 8 for Hinduism from India, 5 for Islam from Babylon, 4 for Eastern Orthodoxy from Ethiopia, 3 from Judaism from the Inca, and 2 for Sikhism from Byzantium. Yeah, that's Byzantium's religion, obviously not going to do too well, when they're probably not going to be around for much longer. 
and the Huns take the first city off of Poland, Gdansk here falling. It's not looking good for the rest of the world at the moment, the Huns looking very strong as Neapolis falls back to Rome and India now joins against the Ottomans too as well as Babylon and Mongolia. Okay this could get rough for the Ottomans, that is a big big coalition to deal with. We'll see if they can handle it. Germany, Germany got this? No. Ro oh, well at least they get a peace deal with Rome, but they do lose Neapolis, Rome regains the city and Rome is still settling all over the place so they're going to be getting stronger. They were up there on a lot of those info addicts despite some early struggles. So we'll see how they finish. I think the Zulu could be a big sort of late grower in this game because there's so much territory around them that is completely empty. So we'll see. And obviously, especially if they conquer this, then yeah, they got free, free access to so much stuff. We'll see what they do. Korea's doing fine. They've held off Poland. I wonder if they'll be able to hold off the Huns because... Addis Ababa here. I think the Huns would have got it, but it was. It's not an easy city to get to. Daegu, there's these lakes sort of in the way, but I guess if Poznan falls, that's pretty easy. Jeonju as well, but Seoul's quite tough to get to, so we'll see if they can hold on a little bit. Just a tiny bit. As we get our first spy, as the Ottomans are the first civ into the Renaissance era. Interesting, because we knew Korea was ahead on tech, so obviously it just depends which path you take, Korea's probably more spread out, whereas the Ottomans may have focused on one technology. It does seem weird though, <laughs> that it wasn't Korea to be the first when we know they're leading. And there we go, Bab Byzantium is out, the Zulu take Adrianople. And now the Aztecs declaring war on Mongolia again. Let's see if this goes any better for them. They were so close last time, or maybe it was the second last time now, but <laughs> when they were attacking before and they just pieced out at the wrong moment. The Huns conquer this Polish city, right on the edge. I wonder, no, you won't be able to see across here. I'm just thinking, could they see each other? But this is going to be quite close. The Huns will have a jump off point to invade the other continent, should they want to. There's still loads of space down here, although it is tundra. So not as valuable. And another for the Inca. I was, I did. I saw the wonder. I didn't see who it was, but I just sort of knew. <laughs> Angkor Wat is the next one for the Incans, who are now being pushed by Korea's units. That is a surprise. There we go. Composite bowmen, watches. There we go. Finally, one that doesn't go to the Inca. Notre Dame goes to Germany, so they will get that extra happiness, which allows them to be even more aggressive early game. I mean, it's, yeah, it's still early game. We're seeing a lot of composite bowmen units still. This is quite interesting on epic speed. We'll see how it goes. I don't think we'd be able to do this on a 40 Civ TSL game just because it would, you know, take forever. But or we wouldn't see the late game before it got too slow. But it's exciting for this one, I think, after the last two where it ran really fast in particular. Egypt now joins against the Ottomans. They are on the same continent, but not really close by. Surely the Ottomans, they're going to lose a few here. I could see Ankara going. Osaka here and Japan actually joined in but India got it in the end and Turfan here is certainly going to probably go as well So the Ottomans will certainly be the big losers I guess in this episode, well apart from Byzantium who died in this episode Never mind Germany Piecing out with the Ottomans not not the best timing, but we'll let you off <laughs> Fair enough. It's the end of that then Mongolia piecing out with the Aztecs Again and again, nothing happened. Rome, just I love this settling from Rome. They're just going for whatever they can get. So are the Aztecs now starting to grab some more. But yeah, Rome, just send in settlers wherever they can. Gotta, gotta respect that. <laughs> it is quite funny. But yeah, India grabbed Osaka there, just as Japan joined in as well. That's rough, but some slow moves from India. But they are doing stuff. Inca piecing out with Korea. That's the end of that. Um, and there we go, the city of Turfan here does fall to Babylon, who are slowly growing at a steady pace along this coast. I like that. We're not really seeing too much naval battles yet. There's a few triremes exploring and running into each other, but that's about it. Germany actually has quite a few down here. Yeah, Germany with eight, nine triremes. Ten, eleven. <laughs> there you go, quite a few. However many, I'm sure I missed some more. <laughs> 
Poland is next to enter the Renaissance era, and they are in trouble. Well, maybe the curse has gone from episodes two to three. We saw that with um. We saw it delayed for Germany in the last game. Maybe the me picking them curse is hitting here for Poland. Rome does complete the Alhambra wonder, but here we go, the Huns. Probably going to take... Oh, they're very close to getting Krakow and Warsaw here. But look at this. Korea's finally putting in a bit of a counter-attack. They may end up getting Reclaw. Yep, there you go. So Korea gets the city out of it. That's nice to see. Rome. Oh, this could be bad for Indonesia. Yeah, I think Rome takes them out here. I know they have the other city safe in the corner, but I think Rome will take them out here. And then Rome could be sort of starting to look really good. Krakow does fall to the Huns. It wasn't to be Poland. They were still really high on the info addicts, which is, I guess, scary because it means the Huns will now be even higher, right? Like, Poland was maybe top, maybe just in the top five, sort of hovering around that sort of position. So, yeah, this, this really sucks. But, yeah, Korea gained a city, so that's good. And maybe if they get one more, I mean, again, it's going to be really tough to defend from the Huns later on, but try your best. Poland does retake those cities for now. I will... I think we'll, we'll we'll look at this for a couple more turns because I think the Huns and Korea should start to sort of get it done. And then we'll... Oh, no, we can go back. Rome not yet quite sieging out Indonesia. But Germany v the Celts. That's a big one in the south. Yeah, I mean, this is... The Celts have got nowhere to go as well. So you'd think eventually Germany will take them out because they'll just get bigger and bigger. So that sucks for the Celts. Machu Picchu is a wonder for the Huns. That's... Do they have the city... No, it's not a city. No, it is a city, right? But I think it's an Incan city. Oh, Machu is not Pichu. Okay, well, it's not in the name. But I'm assuming in real life they might be the same place. Regardless, Poznan is the next city to fall to the Huns. Reclaw goes back to Korea. The Huns did not get Krakow back just yet, but maybe next turn. The Aztecs now going up against the Ottomans. Bursa here, under siege. There's a lot going on. <laughs> All over the map, Rome. I thought they'd have a lot of success here. It's not gone to plan. Surely Indonesia can't mess this up as well. Surely not. The Huns do take Krakow in the background, but let's focus on this. I think it's a bit bigger. Indonesia joins against the Ottomans. Not the right time to do that. Indonesia, but whatever. We'll let you off. Let you off this time. Yeah, I'm hoping Korea can at least get like one more city. That would be nice for them. If they could take Woods here, maybe get lucky and get Warsaw. I doubt it, but you know, a bit of luck. I mean, again, I'm sure the Huns will come straight after them, but anything to slow them down. Give, it's not so much about slowing them, just killing them. It's about giving somebody else a chance to be as good as them. So the Zulu, for example. Um, I imagine someone out here in the east will, in this continent, will be as well. Germany. Maybe going to grab the city of Truro here. Indonesia is holding off Rome just fine. I did not expect that. I thought Rome had this in the bag, but I'm wrong. Babylon, piecing out with the Ottomans, but the Aztecs and Mong Mongolians still going for it, so maybe they'll squeeze on through. Zulu's turn. They Have they done anything? They have settled a new city in the middle, and they do have musket men, but no... Okay, and I think they're about to invade someone. There you go. <laughs> With their MP units as well. Pretty powerful unit. We'll see who it is. It'll be the Inca or Korea, obviously, but could be either of them. It's actually their turn now. I think it'll be next turn, because it should have come up by now. Warsaw does fall to the Huns. Come on, Korea. Where's your melee units? I don't know if they have... Are these whole hatches? They might not be able to take it. I don't know. Uh, I haven't played as Korea. I think they might have given this to the Huns, sadly. Yeah, they have. Never mind. They tried their best, but yep, that goes to the Huns, leaving Poland just over here. At least the sea crossing might protect them for a little while. Uh, Germany is very close to taking Truro. Jakarta could fall as well here to Rome. Yep, it does. Okay, that's big. There we go. Rome finally gets it done. And they keep holding. Indonesia is terrible, aren't they? I'm sorry. We always laugh, not laugh at them, but in TSL games they normally do bad because of their spawn, but here they have just been a dreadful, dreadful effort from them. So here we go, final turn of this episode. And... 
Yeah, so the Zulu are going to go for Korea. I think that's pretty obvious. Rome versus the Ottomans. Um, probably not the. You're not really ready for that, but the Ottomans are busy all the time, so it'll be okay. They should get this next turn. And there you go. The Zulu also complete the Himeji Castle. I think Germany has just missed out for now, but they'll see next turn probably grab the city and should get Edinburgh too. So that's really good for them. I think they might be one of the sieves that can challenge the Huns. Although the Huns look huge actually down here. <laughs> you might, you're going to have to do a lot more. But there we go. That'll be it for this episode. So as always, if you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe as well if you are new to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.